All right, y'all, so welcome back to another one. So I think you guys will really enjoy this video here today. So obviously, as I said before, not doing a ton of trapping this year, not setting out a big line anyway. Uh, still gonna trap, but not setting out a big line. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, we're gonna kinda go back to my roots, so to speak. Uh, I wanna bring you guys along on uh, setting up a small walking line. Uh, what I mean by that, this is a piece of property that I can't access by side-by-side, -side, ATV, anything like that. So it's a walk-in only line. Um, I think this will be very relatable to a lot of people. This is how I started out. You know, I didn't have a, a four-wheeler or side-by-side -side or anything. You know, I started out, um, you know, walking in on these pieces of property. Uh, so anyway, I think this will be very relatable. Uh, let me throw the drone up real quick. I'll give you a, a sh shot of what this piece of property looks like. And then I'll show you what uh what we got here and we're gonna go set it All up. Alright, so let's take a look at this piece of property here before we go in and set it up. So what you're staring at here, uh the wooded timber areas is what we're gonna be setting today. Um now this is a pretty typical kind of situation what I get here. Um obviously I'll show you here. We'll just we'll just pan over and you can see the uh the grassy pasture areas there. Uh, those are areas that I'm not allowed to trap. You know, a lot of what we trap here is just kind of real broken up private ground. So I won't be able to set anywhere out there. Obviously that big point that you see, that would be an optimal place, but I don't have permission. Uh, what I have permission is you can see inside the timber here, uh, you can see that creek that just kind of meanders through there. And then it comes over to this pipeline road here. And um, that's kind of the boundary line is that pipeline road. I can basically set the timber. So I'll drive you guys, uh, I'll just kind of drive you guys forward here and we'll just look down just a little bit at this so you can see it's nothing but timber um, this was a section that was actually logged out it's been a number of years ago but there are still some uh, still some trails and you know remainders of the logging roads but not a lot uh, but so this is what we're gonna do here we're gonna set this up um, let me pan over it again you guys can just kind of see what we've got uh, this is a walking trail now obviously like I said we're going to get a bunch of rain uh, over the next couple of days so although I would like to set that far side I'm actually accessing this from like where you guys would see the drone here uh, I won't be able to access that part of the creek because if we get the strong rains all my sets um, will be on that side and I won't be able to cross it so we're just going to concentrate here on uh, on where we can set um, you know kind of in between the creeks this is coming from the road side here and uh, we'll see so anyway I just figured I'd give you guys a uh, a little bit of a view this is just a timber ground we're gonna go in and and uh, and set it up and just see what we end up end up taking out of this there's another view kind of just overhead you can see just timber um, you know a lot of times we'll try to set field edges and stuff but in this instance I I just can't because of permission reasons All right, so as you can see there it, we're down in a bottom ground here um, kind of fields on both sides so we're gonna set the wood line up obviously I'd like to be able to set on each side but I just don't have permission uh, so we're gonna make do so let me show you what I got here uh, as I said this is a walking line so we're going in real light today um, and I think I got let's see I've got two 220s uh, four dog proofs five one and a halves and then five canine sets so uh, you know, 16 sets here is what I've got. You can see, obviously, I'm walking in, so I've got just a bare bones, minimal tools here, a um, couple of baits, different things like that, and uh, yeah, we're gonna go walk in here, and uh, we're gonna go walk into the timber. So as I said before, a big creek. We're expecting a ton of rain, so all my sets that I put out today, um, I'm putting out with the. I'm putting out to take water, right? I'm putting these sets out with the intentions of them. Uh, they're going to get rained on. So we got to keep that in mind. Uh, as you saw, that piece of property, it's got the big creek that runs down one side. So I'm actually, we're starting on the opposite. I'm just going to kind of go through this property, make a big horseshoe all the way through it, uh, walking trail wise. And then that'll get my sets started out on the far side. So if the creek does flood, they don't get all, uh, all blowed out and we can just keep adding uh, sets throughout the week. But yeah, that's what we're going to start doing here, um, just kind of walking through. So we'll get to our first location, and uh, I'll show you guys how we set it up. Like I said, I brought some dog proofs, I brought some one and a halves, and I brought some canines. Now what I like to do is, I like to put my dog proofs and uh, my 220s on deer trails that have coon sign on it. 
Uh, you're a lot, a lot less likely to have a, a snap trap on a trail like that. Um, you know, where you see coon sign and deer sign, you know, put a dog proof. They won't, they won't mess with it near as much. Or a 220 if you can get it, you know, like where the trail meat comes into the deer trail. This, however, is a small game trail. Let me show you. Uh, just kind of walking down the way here. And if you guys can see, that is a small game trail. And it goes right by that tree. Let me come off the side here. Okay. That small game trail, you can see. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Boom. That little green tuff of grass, that is a blind set location. That is a perfect blind set location. Um, so we're going to take a one and a half. We're going to put a blind set right there. This is a great uh, set to use whenever you've got rain coming or a lot of water because it doesn't have a lot of bait. We can just throw some leaves over it. Um, you know, we're not trying to stop them. So there we go. That's a good set. Uh, it's real thick in there. I'll make the set and I'll show you guys. So anyway, this is, uh, this is why we have a number of different sets and traps in our arsenal. Uh, this set here will catch. Now, it just rained and obviously this... This, I, I think, was all flooded out just a couple of days ago, just by the way the grass is laid down. So there's not a lot of sign because, honestly, it just went down yesterday. So the critters may have not actually moved back up into this, this piece of timber yet. Um, this is all bottom ground, so it may take them a couple of days. But that's a good location there. All right, so that's second set made right there. Let me show you. Coming in off the side. All right, so what I did was... Um, there's the set. There's the set right there. You can almost see the pan. This is this is trapping at its basic, guys. You can see the trail come down through there. The only thing I did was put two little cross sticks. Um, they're maybe stepping up an inch, just to where you know ideally he wants to put his foot in between those two places. There, um, trap is not staked. It's ran over. You can see that limb there. I cut down a small tree. I've got a fence staple right there. So the idea here is, um, if we make the catch there, that I want that tr that animal. Hopefully, he'll get trapped and he'll run off to the side of the trail. Because if we st if we would stake hard right there, or even stake to that tree, um, he's just going to make a big catch circle, blow it out, and then we won't be able to, you know, we won't have that good trail to set back again. So that's a big enough tree that if the water does come up. Um, you know, obviously the, the creek's right behind there, so it's just going to get pushed into those brush. I won't lose the trap, um, but it's still small enough that hopefully he, he can just move it, you know, even if he moves it six, seven feet away. That's all I'm wanting, uh, and then, you know, we'll have that good trail to set again. All right, blind set. Super simple. All right, moving on. All right, so we made it like 30 yards, 30, 40 yards down. I'm trying to stay out of the creeks because I know the rain's coming. I don't want to make a bunch of sets that are going to get just washed out and blowed out. So we're kind of staying on the high bank. Found a good spot for a 220. This section right there's a lot going on right here. That's a small game trail. What I'm standing on is a deer trail right there. Slammed a 220 in. There's a trail that splits off, goes down into the creek. The other one meanders down. So we got a lot going on. Brushed in a nice 220. Um, you know, this will hopefully catch something. If not, we're right down though. We can drop it down into the creek where the trail uh, cuts alongside the creek once the water goes away. Moving on. All right, so we're moving right along here. Um, come across just this massive deer trail here. Like I said, I'm pretty sure all this was underwater. Um, that's why I'm not seeing a lot of sign, but obviously just a just a massive deer trail here that cuts across this main trail that I'm walking on. Uh, so, so this is where I like to put dog proofs. Um, you know, if you put footholds on these trails, uh, obviously you're going to miss the canines if you get one to come down through there. But, you know, them deer are going to, they're going to mess with your set if you start setting deer trails. Uh, I like to get off the edges in the fields and kind of get away from the deer if I'm going to set canine sets. Uh, kind of like how we set that first set. So the coons are going to be running the, these trails just the same as the deer. Uh, and this big trail cuts right across the piece of timber uh, down into the creek. So I know that they're using it. Um, but yeah, went ahead and I like dog proofs here because they just don't get messed with. Uh, the deer can step right over them. So I put a dog proof right there, dead center of the trail. And then we come across. 
dead center of the trail. Both the traps are fence stapled off to the to the tree right there. That's why I chose these spots. Simple fence staple off to the tree. We can catch them. They won't go anywhere and we'll be able to reset. All right, so we're getting some steel on the ground here. All right, so we're just really cooking right along here. Found my next spot for my other 220. Just brought two, but uh, yeah, check this out now. This is nice. So we've got the nice big trail. Comes along through here. And look where it goes. Boom, right there. I mean, that is just, that is textbook. That is textbook 220. I'm gonna throw one in there, move on. All right, so just made another one of the, my pipe sets here. I, they're called pipe dream sets. Um, I think is the technical term. Somebody's actually named it now, but anyway. That's all we got there. This is a scent only set right here. Um, just kind of off the trail here. Um, against all this grass and stuff. The trap is right there. Pipe. We got some bait down in it, so. Yeah, so this is a scent deal. This is not a visual thing, but should catch something. And this is a very, very waterproof set right here. Um, the trap is actually not really even bedded so much as just laying on the ground with grass on the top of it. Made them last sets there. And I wanted to get across the creek because that's really where, you know, where the big timber starts. Uh, you know, majority of your fur is going to be, but uh, the creek is just too high yet. I just, I walked it for a good little piece. And I, I couldn't find a spot, log jam or anything. I couldn't, everything was over my hip boots. So anyway, we got the, what we get, six or seven sets out. Uh, six or seven sets out. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll check them tomorrow. And uh, hopefully the water will drop by then. And then uh, where we can cross the creek, get across the creek and then access that, basically that back half of the, of the timber. So. That was kind of where I wanted to be anyway, you know. Usually this real kind of funny, dingy bottom ground, it's not a near good as producer so you can get, you know, up in the hills on the, up in the big timber, so. Anyway, I'm walking back to my, where I left my pack basket. I just dropped it trying to look for a spot to cross the creek, couldn't find it. So anyway, we'll check back with you guys uh, tomorrow and uh, we'll check our sets, our few sets, and then we'll uh, hopefully, hopefully get out some new ones if it's not pouring down rain. All right. <laughs> so they said we were supposed to have about a quarter inch of rain last night, and um, man, I mean, it rained all night. We probably had close to an inch and a half, two inches. So. Uh, all the creeks are swelled up, flooded out, so I don't have a lot of high hopes for today. Um, but obviously, got to check all these traps. Uh, maybe them 220s worked. It started raining about uh, 7:30, 8 o'clock last night, so we really didn't have a lot of time to to let the sets work. Um, anyway, come down here and check them. I probably won't set anything today uh, down here in this bottom, just because, like I said, I want to get across the creek, and you know, I couldn't yesterday, and there's no way I can do it today. So. Uh, Anyway, we're gonna go run through here, check these sets. Maybe we caught something, I don't know. We're at the first set here. And uh, this is why I talk about, you know, dirt holes suck in the way, or in the rain. So obviously there's the trap. Uh, by using the grass, that trap's fine, but you can see it. dirt hole is just, uh, just full of water. It would have taken a quarter inch of rain, fine, but you know, inch and a half, two inches, it's just gonna fill up. So anyway, let's mosey on down and, uh, Maybe we, maybe we caught something. We blanked. Uh, obviously, that's kind of what I was expecting, too. I mean, we only had six sets out, number one. Uh, we got the rain at a very inopportune time. If the rain had happened, you know, later in the evening, you know, where the critters had a chance to move, um, I think we may have done something. But So here's the creek. This is, the, this is a creek that I've been trying to cross here in this property. You can see it's just plumb bank full. Um, Whenever I stand down in the bottom of this creek, I, the banks are over my head. So you can see it's it just blowed out like no other. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just leave this. Um, didn't connect with anything, which no surprise. But uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll let this water go down and then uh, 
hopefully we'll get back in here and put some sets in. There's a lot of fur to be had down in here, um, but we just got to have the weather for it. So anyway, that's what you get. You guys wanted to see the real deal. This is this is the real deal. You got to take the highs with the lows. You got to have those bad check days. You got to have the good check days. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here. It's a good deal. I can get home before dark today and uh, do some other stuff. All right, so we're down there checking these couple of sets here I've got. Uh, the creeks are still real high, so I'm just going to wait just another day, let the water go down. Uh, but we are checking these few sets that we got out. So we're at this uh, blind set, this blind one and a half set that I made. Uh, as you can see, the trail it meanders on down. This is the one the trap was right there. Trap was right there. I got a pretty vocal looking coon here. So, anyway. You can see there he is, a deep, deep pad catch in that one and a half. Um, and this was the toggle that I used. So you'll recall whenever I set this, I said all I wanted to do is just get out of the way just enough um, with that toggle that I'll be able to re remake that. And as you can see, that is exactly what happened. He didn't pull that, that toggle, but you know, four or five feet. Um, but that is still a perfectly intact trail. Uh, the, the pinch point or the funnel is still there. So uh, anyway, that's cool. We can get that guy taken care of and uh, that's gonna stretch out to be about a two X. That's about my average in between a two and three X. That's about my average coon, but uh, anyway. We'll get this guy taken care of, and uh, we can put that set right back where we caught it, where we had it, and uh, and we can catch more fur out of it. So don't pass up the blind sets, guys. The blind sets can be deadly. Um, I've already walked past, walked down this line, and uh, we can catch anything else. So, uh, you know, they weren't hungry, but we got them moving. All right, so here's the remake. You can see the trail coming down, be bumping down through. Trap set just there again. And uh, then it moseys on down. So, yep, we'll definitely be able to get uh, at least one more catch out of here. Uh, you know, depending on how how bad he boogers it up. But uh, you know, this is a pretty good trail, obviously. So uh, we'll just keep moving down, moving down until we uh, run out of spots. But don't overlook the blind sets, guys. The blind sets. Uh, I catch a lot of fur every year in a blind set. You know, and it's not species specific that's the cool thing about a blind set it'll take anything that's going down that that trail all right so we're back down here at the uh at the creek water finally went down um not all the way but it, it went it's going down so i just checked the two sets up the way and everything in it but uh yep there's another big that's a big boar coon look how yellow he is big coon though so anyway um like i said if, if you got sets out the day after those front move through that's that's whenever you need it and, all right i'm gonna get them taken care of i'm gonna reset this and uh we'll see what else we can do all right so we're down here checking sets today it's a nice chilly frosty morning um but anyway i just wanted to share with you guys you know i see a lot of people um talk about misses and different things like that so what we got here is this is the first set uh, I'm walking out there checking these little this little line here uh, we're waiting on the creek to go down so we can get big line set out but anyway so what I've done here is I've had a deer step in my set uh, this was not a critter this was a deer and I wanted to show you the difference right because uh, there is a difference and that way you guys will know you know don't be thinking that you're missing critters or something. So anyway, here's this set. Um, this is this is that kind of step down dirt hole set that we made. And this is exactly like it looks right here. So you can see there's the hole. Uh, now this thing was full of water yesterday. Um, but this is what I came up to today. You can see the traps obviously right there. It's out of the ground and it's laying just right there. Well, let's stick out of the way for you guys so the chains pulled tight right there 
we've got no catch circle and there's no no fur or anything in the trap just a snap trap pulled tight what that is is that's a deer stepping in there obviously deer big animal we got a hoof you know rather than a foot and then he just you know jumps or takes a takes a step pulls that trap chain tight it pulls off the ground because we're not trying to catch deer and uh there you have it that's a deer stepping in your set so it happens that's what it looks like don't think that you're missing critters if that happens now if you've got a catch circle or you know you can see where animals been in it and then it's pulling out then that then you got other issues but this this is just a typical we we had a deer in the set the trap worked exactly as it was meant to uh you know wasn't able to hold him it pulled out and uh, anyway it's all you can ask for uh you know the set's not disturbed all i gotta do is just bed the trap back in and uh and we're good to go so uh just moseying down this line here and uh we're to the set where i set the doubles on each side of dog proofs here so we've got an empty dog proof over there you can see the trail sitting right in the middle trail comes down this way there's the trail we had the dog proof set right there and there's the coon so good pair size coon there uh pretty simple like i said this is a this is setting the dog proofs on the deer trails so they're not messing with it uh i can see deer tracks uh you know in the in the trail in the mud so they've been down through here haven't messed with the trap and the uh the old coon got in there so we'll get him taken care of there and uh and we'll go check a few more sets here all right <laughs> so we are back down here back down in this creek again it's finally came down uh and we have changed seasons boy it was uh it was pretty warm last few days and now we've got 30 degrees and spitting snow so yeah definitely change of seasons gonna get the critters moving now but uh anyway just came down here uh to this creek here so this is the set that uh well both these locations have caught now multiple times i think this is the uh what fourth coon out of this location fourth or fifth um this set here is untouched on the high bank this set here, yesterday was the first day that it was out of water in, I think, five days uh, because of the creek being so high. So I rebated it last night, and you can see, picked up this nice coon here. Um, you know, he's coming he's coming down the water's edge, so uh, that's how we picked him up. Obviously, didn't get one right where I'm standing, but uh, this is a small coon. This is a small coon, so uh, I'm going to let him go. I don't know if there's any good spot for me to get a setup for the release, but it's pretty simple. You guys have seen me do this a hundred times. Um, we'll get a release on them, and uh, you know, there's no reason in keeping this small coon. This coon here will probably stretch out. Um, he'd be a large. Uh, he probably won't make. He won't make a medium, but he'd, he'd be right on the edge of a medium and a large. And I'm just not going to keep anything that uh, you know XL or bigger. So anyway, we can get this guy. Uh, released he's gonna go off and uh, we'll maybe catch him next year he'll be bigger all right so there we go let's see here if we can get this dude released without a whole bunch of commotion here he's so small he's got both feet in the, in the trap so i'm just gonna take wait get me out of the frame bud the creek now look guys that <laughs> there he is happy and help all right so obviously i've done that multiple times i'm not just gonna pack around a catch pole uh no big deal just restrain him a little bit take the trap out so obviously you guys saw that coon had both front feet in the trap and uh you know he ran off perfectly so these traps aren't they're not hurting them it's perfect to release them uh, i have no problems releasing i release a good number of stuff each year um so anyway that's that the snow's starting to really come down y'all we're gonna get to moving we're just coming down uh creeks have finally went down so we're gonna come in here today and make a few more sets down in this uh down in this bottom ground but i'm checking the sets that i made a couple of days ago 
Um, I've been checking them every day, but you know, I'm checking them as I go through. So we're coming up to the last set. Last set that I showed you guys, um, it was just that absolute perfect set for a 220 where it just wandered off down through the, underneath that tree there and it just looked just perfect. And I said that set will catch. And look at what we got here. Just an absolute stud of a coon. Um, perfect, absolute perfect catch on him. So let me see here if I can set you up. Like I said, this set's been here for a couple of days. Um, you know, it's not gonna catch all every day, but these bottoms are starting to dry out. Uh, and the critters are moving. All right, so right here is where the trap was set. And I, like I said, it comes and meanders down. It just looks so perfect. And uh, there's that old coon right there, big old boar. That's, that's a 20 plus pound boar there, that's a good one. Um, just an absolute perfect catch. You can see just right behind the ears, that's exactly how you want them. Uh, you know, you, I see a lot of people talking about, oh, I suitcased him, I did this, that. Well, you know, a suitcase catch is not really a proper catch. Uh, you know, if you suitcase an animal, he's actually getting too far into that conibear. Uh, the ideal catch, the ideal catch is uh, is right right behind the, the neck there. I mean, that's that's a stud there. Throw him off to the side. And that's the beauty about these 220s, is we're going to be able to put that trap right back where we had it um, and be able to make another catch. So, you know, a big thing with, uh, with setting 220s and making good catches is all about the height. And over the years, I've found that my preferred height is um, it's about the height of the springs if you put them straight down. So you know, right there, we're almost straight up and down with the spring. That's a good height. You got to remember that coon's actually walking down at an angle. His back end travels a little higher. So that's the set right there. We're going to go ahead and brush it in. Make sure your springs are off, obviously. And, uh, you know, that's the trail he came down. He didn't come down this trail. He came down that, that trail. It was just a perfect, perfect catch. Perfect set. Uh, you know, we're just going to brush it in just like that. That looks real natural again. that up there we go guys all right so there's that set remade right there you can just see the traps all blended in real nice there's our big stud of a coon and uh, it's snowing pretty good now so I'm gonna make a few more sets down in here and uh, then we'll have have this spot set up a little bit better all right so we made it back down here to this uh back down to this creek i've been trying to cross for a good number of days and uh well that's what it looks like now now that the water's gone down uh you can see it just was a little trickle i think the last clip i showed it was you know it was up over top of them trees there so uh, that water's came down five and a half feet um so anyway, we can, we can cross it now. We don't have rain in the forecast for a decent number of days. And we've also got a shotgun season coming up that I gotta get out of here. So I'm gonna trap this here for a few days, hopefully pull the cream of the crop off and, uh, and do pretty good. But, yep, like I said, this is, uh, this is me hobby trapping. I'm waiting, waiting for prime days. So anyway, this was my whole point of getting down in this, uh, this section was 
was trying to get in this creek system. Uh, I actually caught an otter down in here last year, and uh, you know I know it's just a good travel way. So we've got sets up on the high ground. They've been producing. I think we've caught half a dozen coon off of them and one fox so far. So yeah, pretty good. Uh, pretty good to get down in here and get down in this creek. All right, so still moseying down this creek here, um, and I'm noticing that that because of the steep banks of these creeks a lot of the trails are running right along the edge and then in the locations where it necks down I do that anyway where it necks down uh, all right so we're just moseying down this uh, this creek here and I'm noticing that basically you know because of the steep banks of this creek the majority of the trails are on the high bank and then where it necks down the creek or if there's a pinch point then the trail dips down into the water for a little bit but the majority of all the the, the trails are on the high bank so obviously i'm gonna set on sign i'm where i'm setting them so anyway i came down came down through here and i mean you can just see that's a beat trail this right here just screamed blind set so i just threw in a one and a half blind set there staked it hard on the back side of this tree hopefully that coon once he gets caught phew, shoot himself off he won't tear it up too much because the chain's tight right there so to get any slack he's gonna be down there um, i didn't really want to put a drag on this just because i'm gonna be checking a lot of this stuff in the dark and i don't have to go hunt for it but anyway follow the trail down through here come down here and this is what i'm looking for look at that they come down through there they go up there. So I'm out of 220s. Uh, if I had 220, I'd put 220 down in there. But I'm out of 220, so I'm going to make a bench set with a one and a half. And this just this is just perfect for it, right? So we've got that root sitting there. Let me see if I can show you the elevation that they're looking at. So what they're doing is they have to step right over top of that root to get up there. They have to. So we're going to bed a trap right at the base of that and we're going to catch something so i've got this trap here it's been stapled off to a legit tree i cut down um, now what i want to do is i want to put this trap the reason i didn't stake hard here is because of this root system if i'd stake hard um, you know there's a pretty good chance that 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 animal would have a lot to hang on to and could potentially get leverage and pull out uh, you know because as you all know, this, these traps, they don't hold everything. Uh, you know, there's restraints. They're not... So, anyway. I'm going to go ahead and uh, build this up like I want to. So, what I want to do is... You can see there's already a bench essentially made. Right there. So, what I'm going to do is I made that a flat spot now. You can see I can get my hand over it. Uh, that's how much of a, I don't know. We're going to kind of break some of that up a little bit. Or we can bed that trap. But these critters now, I mean, this is a deadly set because they got to put their foot there. They're not going to jump over that. They're coming down or up the hill, so. Hopefully by using this toggle too, we can preserve the set enough where we can reuse it because by the looks of it there is a lot of traffic coming down here so i'm gonna take some mud and we're i mean we're gonna bed this trap we're gonna get it we're gonna get it good and solid we're not gonna we're not gonna half-ass this here uh, we're gonna bed that trap in there make sure if something does step on the jaw, it's not gonna move. All right, so that's pretty good set right there. I'm not gonna cover this with dirt because there is no dirt here. <laughs> it's all mud. Uh, but I'm just gonna throw some debris over top of it. They'll almost see the pan, but that's fine because they're gonna come up through there. That's what the set looks like. You can see coming down, down, down. 
boom, trap right there coming down. This is a good, fun little set, and this this will catch. Uh, I'll be surprised if if we don't end up with a double here uh, in the blind set, the two the two blind sets, not even a baited set, uh, just because of the traffic. So anyway, moving on, we're losing daylight. So I am super excited about this set. So I actually caught an otter down in the same creek system. Uh, it was probably about a mile or so down uh, last year. And I never knew that these small creeks right here held otter. Uh, and it may have been bachelor juvenile otter just moving through, but you know, it still kind of gave me the excitement, you know, that I don't have to go to the big, big creeks like I usually do. So anyway, this here, It's just an absolute perfect spot. I brought one 330 with me because, uh, like I said, I don't have super high hopes, but I mean, that just is textbook. Next, right down through there, um, we have to have our 330s at least halfway underwater, and that thing's about three quarter underwater right now. So I've got, and I've got room uh, if the water drops. So this set can sit here for a while, and uh, I mean, it, it literally necked down the whole creek. So anything that's going to be swimming up through here is going to be is going to get caught that's that's pretty cool um i don't find a lot of spots like that and like i said we don't have we don't have muskrats and we don't really have the mink population like like other parts of the country where you can just set everything so i mean there's no muskrats or anything down through here um but definitely that otter i caught last year i mean same creek system but i mean a mile is nothing for an otter so yeah, pretty excited. I hope this set produces. This will be a cool catch. All right, so we're checking the line here um, this evening, and uh, you know we've had a pretty, pretty substantial cold snap here. Um, now I only had, I think, I only had two canine sets out. They didn't hit, but uh, you know the majority of my stuff was set out for like coon, mink, you know, water stuff, and uh, you know we had a pretty substantial temperature swing. I'm talking like almost 40 degrees uh, within the last you know, day and a half. And, uh, you know, a lot of the time this early winter, you know, before everything starts rutting, um, the, you end up with the, the coons especially will go into a, a state of like dormancy. They'll just hole up. Uh, you know, that's, they're, they're built for this. You know, they got a lot of fat on them. Uh, they, if it's not rutting season, they don't really need to be moving around. So you'll end up with some highs and lows. Um, so we're running through checking our little bottom ground here. Uh, I've only got a couple more sets to check, and I'm pretty well blanked out for the day. Uh, I did pick up this coon here right behind you. I'll I'll show you guys here in a second, but yeah, you just got to kind of play these uh, play these weather swings. Now, obviously the coon have not ran. They they didn't run yesterday real good, and they didn't run today or last night, obviously. So uh, we're we're trending towards a warm up. So it's good. I've got sets out now. Um, I think I've got 14 14 sets down here in these bottoms. And, uh, you know, that may not seem like a lot to, i say, 40 acres worth of timber, but you got to remember, at a certain point, you can start, like, setting over top of yourself. Uh, you know, I could go in here and set 100 sets, but, you know, to keep percentages up and, you know, you just kind of kind of find that happy medium ground between having enough sets to cover the ground and, you know, too many where they're blanking each other out, right? You know, you, there's no reason to have a set every 10 foot down a creek, right? So... Anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Let me show you this nice coon here. This is uh, this is the set that I, I told you it would make a catch. It was just an awesome trail on the high bank of the creek here. Uh, that was the blind set right there. And here is that bench set over here that we made. It's untouched. Um, but this blind set is just got that old coon in there. Just a perfect deep pad catch. Uh, there you guys can see just a perfect deep pad catch that's a one and a half double jaw that's a nice big coon that's a 3xl coon um you know having that double jaw trap if he can't get to chewing uh you know it was cold last night it got down to about 20 degrees and uh, obviously like i told you guys i staked it on this back side of the tree where the trap was almost tight here and you can see the trail is almost completely intact with uh with staking hard he, he just went down on the edge of the bank there, and uh, that's where he stayed. So, anyway, uh, we'll definitely be able to reset this. I have absolutely no problem resetting 
uh, a location like this this is a and you can see the trail that goes right here um, them critters are just gonna follow the same trail you know this is a trail that they follow all the time so anyway there's that not a lot to talk about <laughs> I don't have a lot of sets out and we've had the cold snap so you know all those factors not bringing in a ton of fur but still putting uh still putting some fur in the shed that's a nice looking coon all right so I mean you guys been wondering about the uh the old air force here um i've been running it now for about a week and a half or so um and it's just been a great little great little trap line gun dispatch gun you can see i've i've uh i've put it a good use already but uh you know one cool thing about this thing is it's like 95 percent of it's aluminum so uh you don't have to worry about it i've stripped it down obviously from the last time i showed you guys just made it more kind of taking in and out of uh you know back of side by sides and just more trap line friendly just kind of streamlined it so yeah been a great little great little trap line gun so far so i've got the power wheel adjusted to 10. uh seems like it gives me the best best uh performance for uh for air usage as well as uh you know not 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 much trauma as far as uh you know being able to dispatch so there you can see i mean it just it puts them right down and uh, just super, super quiet. Been very happy with it. All right, so there's the remake for y'all. Uh, like I said, that, that trail you can see, it just continues on. Uh, just I used just a very little subtle bit uh, just to kind of build it back up. But yeah, trap setting right there. This will definitely take another critter. Um, you know, the blind sets are just deadly, especially if they're not real hungry, you know. Um, I mean, it's hard to tell right now if I'm having Passovers on the dog proofs just because everything's froze up now. But, uh, yeah, if these coons are, if they're, they're fine, they're fed, they may not stop and eat. These blind sets, they don't have to be. They just got to be moving through. So, yep, there we go. Another one for the first shed, y'all. That will probably catch again. I have, uh, I have very high confidence in a, uh, another catch in this set. So, anyway continue on all right guys so sometimes you just have one of those days and this is one of those days the possums moved last night and uh and nothing else seemed to so i have uh i've checked almost all my sets here i've got just about 20 sets out not many but i've got five possums today <laughs> this is it, hopefully the stuff will move tomorrow night because the possums definitely moved last night so anyway this is that blind set again that you guys saw so this is the third or second catch in three nights. Um, big old burly possum. I'm gonna let him go. So obviously the set's getting kind of. There's a catch circle here now. Uh, being I caught two critters, but I'm not that worried about it. I'm gonna push everything up. I'm gonna funnel them right back there, and we're still gonna make a catch. You can see that defined trail. They're gonna still follow it. All right. So we just got that set remade there. Um, Anyway, you can see I've just taken all the stuff these worked up and just kind of made a funnel. This looks a little childish, but you got to remember, look at the trail that it's made. Uh, that it's coming out of the tall grass. It looks just exactly like it. And we haven't changed the, the path of the trail at all. Uh, from a small game perspective, that just looks like he's just wandering on through. So, anyway. Two catches, three days, obviously not the target. This, the second time, but yeah. This set will take another, it'll, it'll take another critter. They must all be coming from that way. Um, because I still haven't caught anything in that, in that bench type set. So, I don't know. Maybe one of these days we'll get a double here. That's what I was hoping on. <clears throat> Alright guys, so we're down here checking sets again today. Um, so, <laughs> obviously as many of you guys know, we don't have a, uh, a bobcat season here. We have to, uh, we have to draw a, uh, it's a lottery deal and for the entire state of Illinois and they only give out 500 tags a year Their numbers are super skewed. Uh, I've said this for years, but anyway Nonetheless, we're back checking sets here and the reason I just went on that spiel is because uh, We come up to this blind set. This is one productive little set. I'll tell you well, We've got ourselves our first bobcat of the year um, Now I don't have a permit So this guy will have to be released but uh this is the third catch in 
three or four days. I don't know, it's been a very productive set. Um, just that small game trail. I actually caught a possum in it yesterday. Uh, and you guys saw how I kind of fenced it off. And uh, obviously there's our cat down there. One and a half. Let me see if I can zoom in. One and a half. And that pad is just buried deep touching the pan. So medium sized cat. Uh, medium sized cat, but yeah, took him just perfect. All right, so anyway, um, gotta release this guy. Now, I didn't bring any of my release stuff with me. I gotta walk all the way back up to the truck and get it. Um, I've got several videos on releasing cats, so I probably won't film it. Uh, but anyway, Pretty neat little, uh, pretty neat little deal. It's too bad I can't, uh, I can't keep him. I've been trying to draw a tag now for five years, and uh, haven't quite got there yet. So, anyway, nonetheless, um, gonna go ahead and uh, and get this guy released. I'm gonna go back up to my truck and get my catch pole. Uh, you know, a lot of different critters I'll release without a catch pole, but these cats are, they got knives on the end of all four feet, so uh, I like to use a catch pole on them. Um, and uh, we're going to get this guy released, and we're going to remake that set again, and hopefully it takes some more critters. Maybe one that we can keep this time. So, anyway, still pretty cool to see the cats. Um, like I said, they're down here. We've, we've got plenty of them. Um, so, anyway, pretty cool. Pretty cool catch anyway. All right. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna end that one uh, right there, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, small little walk in line. Um, you know, I was honestly down there for quite a little bit longer than uh, than what I normally would have been. Right? Normally I give this give a spot like that about a week, but I was actually down there for almost two weeks. So uh, obviously didn't show you know every single set and every single catch. Uh, you know, the video would have been like three and a half hours long. But, uh, you know, I tried to pick apart, pick some of the highlights, and still pick, uh, you know, some of the educational stuff. Because, like I said, you know, this is, I think, a very relatable subject to most. Uh, you know, starting out or just guys that don't have the access, uh, you know, that other people do. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you know, I had a ton of fun walking down there. Like I said, it was just getting back to my roots. Uh, you know, that that is what I did back in the day. Uh, you know, and I started off with, and I put up a bunch of fur doing that too. Looking back, you know, I haven't done a walk in line like that in a good number of years. And, uh, you know, looking back, I put up a bunch of fur back in the days by doing that. It was a lot more work, obviously, than, than the streamlined uh, kind of lines that I've got going now. But just a super fun time to be down in the woods. So I don't have exact numbers on what I caught down there. Um, I kind of had a few other little things going for videos and whatnot. But I mean, I, I did I did catch a decent number of fur. Caught a bunch of different variety too. You know, that's the cool part about about trapping those bottom ground creek system things like that. Is you know you you kind of get in on everything. So uh, just a super fun time. So anyway, guys, if you've made it this far in the video, I really do appreciate you guys watching. Uh, you know, like I said, I wanted to kind of make this video in one shot, uh, you know, where you can kind of tell the story as it progressed through. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to leave you to it. Um, if you would, do me a favor. If you made it this far and you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Hit that like button, that little thumbs up. Really does help me. If you're new to the channel and this is your first video, definitely go back and look uh, at some of the previous videos. I've got several hundred videos on this channel all relating to trapping and fur handling. I think you'll find something uh, fairly interesting. With that being said, guys, uh, I've switched over here the last couple of days to some water trapping. I've got some fur to get skinned and fleshed here uh, this evening. So I'm going to leave you guys to it. As always, y'all, I appreciate the view, and we'll see you next time.